eh, amigos de TechCetera, ¿cómo están? Hoy estoy con Mark Post. Mark eh, es el Chief Scientific Officer de una compañía que está haciendo algo muy cool y es básicamente producir eh, alimentos y sobre todo carne en un laboratorio. Entonces vamos a hablar con él. Mark, good morning, good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, welcome. Hi. Uh, Mark, uh, one, one of, we, we, what we wanted to do is ask you about Mosomeat and what you're doing um, and why you're doing it, what you're doing, what the impact will be in our future as, uh, as humans. So let's start with that. What is Mosameet? Mosameet, right. sorry. Yeah, Mosameet is a startup company from the University of Maastricht here in the Netherlands that aims to commercialize uh, culturing meat from stem cells. So a completely new way to produce uh, the same tissue that we have always known being meat. So this is real meat. The difference is how you create it, right? Exactly. It's the same thing, same tissue, same experience, but we make it in a different way, partly uh, without using the cow. So instead of farming cows and then slaughter them, what you do is you cultivate stem cells and from those stem cells, you build the meat. Exactly. So we all have stem cells in our muscle and a cow has, has two uh, and they're sitting there to repair the tissue when it's injured. And when the tissue in, is injured, they start to proliferate and they start to form new muscle, which is basically meat. Um, they can do that inside of the body, but surprisingly, they can also do that outside of the body. So that's what we are using. We, we take the cells out, let them proliferate until we have many, many, many cells, trillions of them. And then we can create from a very small sample, uh, thousands of kilos of meat. How, how, big is, how big is the sample that you need to build, I don't know, a uh, hundred burgers? Uh, it's about um, one centimeter long and one millimeter in diameter. So it's a tiny, tiny piece. Wow, so it's basically nothing. Right, and yeah, it's a tiny you piece. Take these, and you take these out of the cows? Yes, um, through a needle. Um, so we poke the cow in the butt and take an, with a needle, we take a small sample of muscle um, out, of, out of it. So the cow moves on. And we use that tissue to produce cells for uh, producing meat. Okay, so I've heard your speech, but I don't. I, I don't know. If people have heard it, uh, and and I think it's the more the most powerful part of your message. Why are you doing this? Uh, we are doing this for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, meat consumption will increase worldwide because of India and China, and there's no way we can produce that amount of meat uh, through livestock. So we have to so we think have about alternative ways. So we have more people and, and then we have more people consuming meat and our current exactly. production model will not be able to, to be sustainable in the short run. Uh, exactly. So it will just not be able to produce enough meat. Okay. Um, the second reason is that by now we know that um, the livestock industry in total contributes about 15 to 20 percent to all our greenhouse gas emission. So it's a major Um, contributor to the impact on on climate. Um, and if you want to do something about that, you have to think about the livestock as well. Um, and the third reason is basically animal welfare. We all have as meat eaters some understanding that it may not be sort of optimal conditions for animals that are being killed for us. Um, so if we want to um, improve that, we need to also think about other ways to produce meat. Okay. So At what point are you? When when will we see uh, most of meat burgers in uh, supermarkets? Right. Um, so uh, together with a couple of other companies who are working on the same thing, we think that in three years we will have this on the market. Okay. Um, in three years, it will still be somewhat expensive and not um, widely available. So for supermarkets, we probably need to wait another uh, couple of years. Okay, but then what you say, when you say couple expensive, a little bit expensive, what are you talking about? How much would a burger uh, be? <clears throat> It would be about, in, in our minds, uh, around $10 for a hamburger. Okay. okay. I, I was asking about your company. Uh, you, you said that the company is still a startup, but you've got some uh, cool investors behind, behind the company, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are very happy that um, uh, a group of Animal welfare people are um, rich. Animal welfare institutions are funding this. Okay. Um, a Swiss um, meat processor, a large Swiss meat processor, 
and uh, Merck Ventures, which is a science and technology uh, company uh, very active in biotech, so very helpful in uh, moving this forward. Cool. Uh, you're coming to Colombia to the Singularity U Summit. Uh, right. what's, your, what's your relationship with Singularity? Um, I'm a faculty member at Singularity, um, the first faculty member of Singularity University in the Netherlands, which was the first uh, uh, partner outside of the uh, USA. Um, before that, I had been teaching at Singularity University in Mountain View a couple of times for the um, for the Global Impact um, uh, course. But now I'm I'm currently affiliated with Singularity University in the Netherlands, and um, as such, part of the global uh, faculty uh, community. Cool. Um, so just to wrap things up, if what would you say to people that have still not bought? the tickets to go to Singularity U Summit. Why should they go? What what things will they see? Well, it's um, if, if you've never gone through anything like this, it's it's pretty amazing experience. Um, the people who speak there are really on the forefront of all the new technologies. Um, and they, they give you a perspective of the future, a pretty realistic perspective of the future um, that you might not have thought about. Uh, and this uh, concerns all the technologies that you can think about, uh, automotive, um, energy, food, um, AI, robotics, um, everything you can, um, fintech, of course, everything you can think of. And it, it widens your scope of what is becoming available in the next couple of years and what you should prepare for. I, I think the cool thing is that you talk about the future and then you said next couple of years, because most of the times people think that the future is 10 to 20 years uh, in a timeline, but then when we when we hear you guys talk, you're all talking about what's going to happen in 2020. That it's basically around the corner. Mark, yeah. thank you for your time. Um, I hope to meet you here once you're once you're here in Bogota. Have a safe trip, uh, and we, we will be seeing you here. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Take care. Bye bye. bye, -bye.